This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's edition of The Pit Stop, where you guys are the true star of the show because you are here to talk about sim racing. So, um, today's show is going to be different. If you didn't notice, we're already sitting in a new location. If you are watching this on The Sim Pit main channel, you're actually watching a replay. You're not watching the live stream because we have moved all of our streaming content is moved to the Simpit Crew channel. So the Simpit channel, the main channel, is going to be used for all edited reviews and that high quality content that the Simpit is known for. Everything live, whether it be racing uh, or just fun stuff we do, unboxings or whatever, or the pit stop will all be found on the crew channel. So I just want to let you all know about that. Be sure to subscribe to that channel as well. And uh, that is kind of the biggest news. We don't have a big news day today. I think the biggest news is stuff that's been going around uh, on around the sim pit. But I got to tell you, it's amazing. If, if the lights are on right now and the stream is working and the audio is working and you're watching, I got to tell you, there were a hundred miracles that allowed and made all that happen. So, a little background on why we're here. I don't, I'm not going to go into great detail, but I, I made a, a tragic error. And anybody who remembers the Fanatic Watch Party, I, I played their video in its entirety from start to finish. And so, rightfully so, they filed a claim for copyright infringement. If you remember the beginning of the show, I even said this video is going to get pulled. And that's okay. And, and no, it isn't okay. I shouldn't have done that. that that's... It's wrong. If it's illegal, it's wrong. You don't do things that are illegal. That's why we have laws. So I'm going to just be the first person to say I really shouldn't have done that and it was worthy of being pulled. I don't even point a finger in a negative way like that's how it should have been done. What I didn't realize, and this is where the tragic is, and I'm just owning up to things because I like to be brutally honest with you guys. Um, and I'm telling you because a lot of you guys stream and you might want to really think about and reread some of the rules about streaming. But the uh the rule is if you get caught doing any kind of copyright infringement playing a movie playing a tv show playing audio music that you don't own the rights to youtube will literally cancel your live streaming ability and without notice so yesterday when i woke up to do the show we couldn't stream on the main channel and it made me look for alternatives uh in the end i'm really happy about it they say some bad things or it happened for good reasons um, I like the fit or the feel of everything live being on this channel, Simpit Pit Crew channel, Simpit Crew channel, uh, because that's now the live channel, and the Sim Pit is now the edited channel. So anyway, that's the end of that. That's what went on. I want—I just didn't want people to wonder why. I want you to know the background, and I want to, you know, even throw a, a small apology to Fanatic because I, I really shouldn't have done that. And and I know some people will come to my defense and say, why did they block the video? And it's like, no, don't come to my defense on this one. I, I should not have done that. I should know better. Um, somebody recently restreamed my stream. I'm not going to go into detail on that. Um, I was horribly offended, uh, you know. So, so anyway, I just, I just want to let you guys know that behind the scenes is the big thing. Over the weekend, I had the 24 hours of spa. It was one of the most intense, I'd almost even say brutal uh, uh, races. I, our team was in the top split. Uh, admittedly, we are one of the slowest teams on the entire track. I think we qualified 59th out of 59 cars. We might have been 58th. Um, and that makes for a long 24-hour race when you're the slow car and getting passed all the time. Makes it very stressful. Makes it very intense. But me and the avid chronic guys, we did bring it home. So uh, Renee, Hawken, and Patrick and I, we drove a really good race. We kept our car, car fairly clean. Beginning of the day, knowing we were in the top split, we set a mental goal. We all talked about it. We thought, okay, if we can get 30th place, we've done well. Well, we finished in 30 seconds. So I have to say, I'm pretty proud of what we did. Proud of the guys, Renee, Hawken, and Patrick for uh, uh, being there. We we just, we all rotated. Everybody changed their sleep schedule. And it was like just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. My alarm went off at four in the morning. Anyway, it was a really fun race. I did stream it live. It still hasn't processed, which means you can't watch my replay. Thank you, YouTube. Uh, but I believe the live stream of the real race, which you won't see as much because 30 second doesn't get much TV time. Steam King, Statman Joshua in the channel. You've been on vacation for a couple weeks, bud. I got to tell you, people ask about you every day. When's Steam going to get back? Where's Josh? Uh, welcome back, buddy. You've been missed, missed a lot. So I think I'm all done with that. 
that's the end of the show. No, uh, what, what's going on in sim racing? Not a whole lot, but let's blow through it really quickly. Um, and I say that because I'm tired and I need to still keep doing some cleanup work on everything going on. So, if we don't have a lot to talk about, I really want to make the sim pit pit stops a little bit quicker. Forza Horizon 4 is having another one of their mixers, we're going to call them. They call them mixers. We're not. They are. Uh, we Are Playground Studios is going to do a live stream today at 11 a.m. Pacific, so that's in just uh, 1 hour 54 minutes. And they're going to be showing off some of the new things. This is the third Forza Horizon 4 live stream, taking a closer look at winter and showing off new features, exclusive gameplay, and developer interviews. So, you Forza guys, Dave Blair... Dave Blair, you need to be our reporter. Johnny on the spot. Go there and get us a report on what they're talking about at Forza Horizon 4. So today at 11 o'clock, if you want to check that out, I'm finding it at the Forza Motorsport Twitter page. Gran Turismo just has a little teeny teaser. And I, you know, I looked at this and I'm like, I don't know what that is. I really don't know what that is. I know it's a car part. I know it's carbon um, with like a little aluminum bit. Um... Okay, that's a part of a car. I'm still not really knowing what it is. Those look like some gills of some sort, like some vents perhaps. I don't know. Anyway, I looked at these photos and I almost wasn't even going to cover the story because I don't like looking stupid. I was going to put it to you guys. Do you know what it is? Guys at race department seem to have figured it out all right. And what that looks like it is is a bare front wing perhaps was that first image. When I say the gills, it's hard to see in this image, but you have those intake vents that go back. Anyway, I thought those are really beautiful teaser photos. I mean, I would make that a desktop image for me. I just, I think the quality of the graphics that we're seeing out of Gran Turismo, Forza, and some of the top PC games even are really, really getting good. Really good. I mean, not just, I mean... Uh, I, I swear, I'm I'm starting to see, like, CGI things in car commercials, and I'm starting to think, when are they just going to start using, like, the games we're playing, literally, for the footage? Um, it's coming up quicker, so I keep telling you guys, the 24 Hours of Spa is coming up. A set of course, is going to be there. They're going to have uh, uh, prizes going on, virtual races, so it looks like this 24-hour version of first look at Assetto Corsa for anybody who has access to getting to Spa. That's Belgium, right? Um, anyway, you are going to want to go there. Going on between the 26th and 29th, so that's this weekend. And you're going to see one of the coolest races there is because I love Spa. That's one of, a great track. But anyway, uh, head over there. If you're out in that area, please go check it out. Be the Johnny on the Spot reporter. Send us some pictures, video. Tell us what it was like. Tell us your impressions. Um, love to make you guys even more or bigger stars of the show. Um, anyway, what else we got? Dakar is now on Spotify. So they have put together uh, a Spotify playlist for Dakar 18. Um, I'm not a member of Spotify. Look at that. So I can't show you what they got, but if you know Spotify, you probably know what they're doing over there better than I do. But it's the official Dakar 18 soundtrack, um, and you can check that out. And we've already talked about the pre-order being available. The crew, the crew continues to do things to kind of push things. Tomorrow, I'm sorry, today. In fact, it's right now. It's at nine o'clock, I believe. Uh, so right now, simultaneous to this. And if you're a big crew fan, I wouldn't be offended if you turn that on as well. Um, but their dev team is going to be live from IVT on Tuesday, July 24th at 6 p.m. CST. Again, I think that's 9 a.m. Pacific. Don't uh, see these vehicles in action on tomorrow's live stream at 9 a.m. PT. I don't know what time it is, but the crew is doing one of their uh, mixers, I guess we can call it. Should we just, is that like the new official word? Are they all just mixers when it's the demonstration by the developers showing off their new game, teasing you, uh, and doing their PR media blitzes out there. Uh, GT Planet had a write-up talking about Nico Hulkenberg taking a lap around Hockenheim Ring in the F1 2018. I think we actually talked about this last week um, when it was more relevant because it was before the race, not after the race. Uh, anyway, in case you missed it, uh, the main thing to take away from this is, in case you guys haven't heard me say it, but look at 
this new collaboration. We talk about the F1 eSport. We talk about everything going on. F1 2018 coming out almost immediately. Um, this is the most in the limelight sim racing has ever been. Uh, and I know we go back and forth, whoops, sorry, excuse me, on the whole, you could even call it controversy when it comes to, like, Formula One and the draft and, and the way it's all come together without even full rules and the amount of, of doubt or, or not known when it comes to the competition. But let's not lose sight of the fact that this is the most in the limelight sim racing has ever been. And if you're like me and you've been doing this a long time, you've you know, at work, you finally broke down and you told your coworker, he's like, what are you doing tonight? And you're like, well, actually, I'm going to go sim race. And they're like, what? Yeah, I, I race on the computer. And they give you that look like you're that, uh, you know, gaming geek. And it's like, no, 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 no. I'm sim racing, man. Anyway, uh, this limelight changes that con conception. And the next time after this goes on, when you tell a friend at work, they're going to know what you do when you say sim racing, and they're going to be impressed that you compete in such a thing. Earlier, I mentioned uh, my error, my, my, you know, what I shouldn't have done. Uh, Fnatic has a second video on the podium. I'm not going to play the video because we know that would not be right. Uh, it's a much better video as far as demonstrating what's coming with the podium bases. Pricing, the warranty, availability the auction, all of those things. So if, if you wanted to get more information on the podium, you'll find this at Fanatic's Twitter page. You'll also have to find it at the Fanatic blog. And if you guys don't know about the Fanatic blog and you're like Fanatic fans, Fanatic fanatics, um, you should know about their blog. You'll find it through their homepage. But it is where you'll find a lot of the cool new news that does come out of Fanatic. So there you go. <coughs> Oh, we speculated, but now we can at least make it official. But we noticed that they had switched driving gear for that uh, Hoonigan Ultimate Rig. They call this the best sim in the world. I don't know if these guys have spent enough time researching the best sims in the world. Uh, putting a lot of uh, metal around the outside of a sim isn't the best sim in the world, in my opinion. But that's a damn nice sim. Uh, but in case there is any... Uh, question, sure, Thrustmaster uh, helped them out and gave them that full setup with the, uh, the TS wheel and the shifter handbrake and all that good stuff. So, But it's officially at the Thrustmaster page. It's not speculation. It's official. Um... No, 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 Jamie, Jamie, the, 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 the whole problem with copyright is playing someone's video. What I'm doing right here is very much within the capacity of the news. And if I had showed a clip of the video, it would have been all good. You are not allowed to play things in their entirety, entirety even if you're a news or media type site. So if you guys remember, if you guys ran last week's Hot Lap Hump Day by Rick Motek, you'll remember there's that young kid whose father was helping him get into the, the rig and he had the driving gloves and he was very serious and I think Kevin Ford even talked, oh yeah, that kid races in real life. Anyway, uh, the write-up here at Rick Motick, this is their Twitter feed is, he came to our hot lap hump day, stayed till midnight, jumped on a plane the next morning, and was at the top of the podium by Sunday. Incredible drive and focus. Sim racing builds real drivers. Alex's proof. So here's a great picture. Um, I think it was this guy right here, wasn't it? Anyway, Alex Searle Racing. Um, was the kid getting in and out of the rig that we saw there running on Wednesday and he goes and uh, podiums uh, for the for the for the event so I think I think that's the one right isn't it this guy this was the kid that was getting in and out wasn't it or was it this guy I think it was this guy I'm sorry it was this guy this guy anyway uh, yeah that was really cool I remember Kevin talking about it and uh, congratulations to him and like Rick Most Tech said sim racing builds real drivers don't ever don't ever let anyone make fun of you sim racing you're working at building a real driver um sim racing 604 is a, a cool channel I don't promote other channels all the time but uh, yeah not even in the ballpark 
uh, Sim Racing 604 has a great channel, and there was a video here that I liked because, you know, talk about putting the Olive branch out or just being one of those guys not afraid of competition or anything else, but cool video because what it is is it's showing you guys, and, you know, I'm going to promote 604 here, and I'm also, by telling you about this video, promoting all of my competition, but, you know, competition's a wonderful thing. It puts all of us, top of the podium, thank you, um, it puts all of us, we all have our own niches. We all have our own audiences. We're not stealing food off each other's tables. You don't have to fear the competition in the world of sim racing media. Uh, anyway, Sim Racing 604 says vacation times. A few channels he'll be watching while he's away. And it's him just basically giving credit to a hand logically gaming. Uh, Billy Strange Racing. I'm just fast forwarding randomly. Gamer Muscle, sure. Ferrari Man 601. I've never checked that channel out. Maybe I need Avid Chronic or oh, that's actually Mitchy Hoyer. Uh, Jimmy Broadband, sure. Mitchell McCoy, Paddock Sim Racing Paddock, sure, sure. Oh, Sim Pit. I didn't even know. I'm just randomly. He could have ignored me. Anyway, if you're wondering, what are the other sites that you can find some cool stuff in sim racing? Keep yourself entertained. I know a lot of you people watch from work. And just need that background entertainment sometimes. And sure, I love the sim pit. I want you all to be here. But check out Sim Racing 604. Look for that video, Vacation Time. And you'll find his favorite things and what he watches to entertain himself. This is at Eurogamer.net. And it's talking about the massive layoffs. Uh, massive, I threw that word in. I Ignore, strike that word. Strike that from the record, please. Layoffs at Onrush developer Evo. Drive Club director Rushy let go. So they are really downsizing and downscaling. You know, never thought of that aspect of the gaming community. Sure, when a game's being built, you have this huge, massive team to build it. And then once it's done, you have the maintenance team that might be this small. And it's like, man, can you imagine you're sitting there being an art guy, working happily, you love your job, you love your coworkers, you're making good money, and you didn't think about the dynamic of the industry, and then all of a sudden you're like part of that first wave, we've released CHOP, or we're done developing CHOP. Um, anyway, I feel bad for all those people because they're now looking for jobs. Um, yes, he will have to add the crew channel, Rick Hyde. Good for you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Tech Power Up. Talking about the first wave launch dates for the GeForce 11 series. So this, you know, it's funny. This card, it's like, we're going to send it. No, we're not going to send it. Oh, it's in Taiwan. No, it's not in Taiwan. This card is too funny. But mark your calendars for the 30th of August. So the end of next month is we're going to start finally seeing the first launch of the new 11 series NVIDIA cards. Save your money. Um, have we seen prices? I'm guessing it's going to cost you, well, for the best one. I, anybody know? How much the 1180? And are they going to make an 1180 tie? Um, uh, so anyway, uh, and how much is that? Does anybody, have they announced? I probably missed that, but I'm sure somebody here knows. Um, yep, it's not a 1080 tie successor. The premium brand extension. Um, the GTX 1180 plus. Um 1500 what's a guess anybody know i'm gonna guess 1500 maybe even 1600 wouldn't that be insane no we're not doing video card giveaways we have no budget here <laughs> no budget newzoo.com has an article here talking about e3 and the success of e3 and you heard my rant you know my opinion and it's more because sim racing is barely even there and so why do i have to deal with 70,000 people to see three booths that's the reality of E3 for me, and it's it's a it's a huge show, but 16 million hours were watched on Twitch with the Microsoft with Microsoft being the number one publisher. But when they looked at the total of all of the press stuff done on Twitch alone, it generated 16 million hours of watching. That that blows my mind. I don't even talk about E3, but I just thought that was huge. Um, what does ROM mean? Isn't that like uh, old it's a way to isn't it a way to play old games it's like an emulator rom emulators i don't remember what rom stood for but nintendo is lashing out and suing console rom sites for mass copyright infringement so i guess 
the word of the day, people, is copyright infringement. The 1180 is going to cost $1,180. <laughs> is that a joke or is that for real? <laughs> that is very, very... Yeah, I think Marco, uh, Brett Favre, I, I think that's what they did with the 1080. I think they actually... Uh, it came out, and then the tie came out later. Uh, start a Sim Racing Expo. We do need a Sim Racing Expo USA. Uh, it will be a little harder to do, but yes, we really do. And it should be on the East Coast, I hate to say, because I'm a West Coast guy. But the East Coast is closer to Europe. Uh, Worth Gaming has another write-up on Ride 3. So in case, I might have talked about this on Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Sorry, guys, it's been a very strange week for me. Um, <clears throat> I think by tomorrow, everything should be back to normal. I should be back to normal, everything. So anyway, if you want more information, see, <coughs> yeah, we talked about the Ducati. Excuse me, hold on. <coughs> All right, sorry about that, you guys. And then I bark into the microphone. Um, live for speed. <laughs> When was the last time you heard anyone on Earth say Live for Speed? Any of you young guys might even have never heard of Live for Speed. And if you don't know Live for Speed, in some ways, Live for Speed was one of the first great sims. Uh, and when I say great, this was a physics sim. They didn't care about licensing. You see that car? That car, what is that? That is no real car. That's like a Toyota, Supra, Porsche, Ferrari... Uh, a, a mashup um, and that's what Live for Speed was all about most of their content was unlicensed uh, or, or fantasy content uh, anyway what do you know there's a new update I clicked on the picture um, olden but golden racing simulation Live for Speed has been updated recently check out the details and see what's been cooking behind the scenes um Live for Speed was released in 2013. That's 15 years ago, people. Um, anyway, the new update, receiving a patch to bring VR to the title in recent years. Um, anyway, uh, anybody who still has that on their system or anyone who wants to dust it off, you know, I owned Live for Speed. I, it would take, I, I don't know if I could remember my login and I don't use the email. That email was so long ago, 15 years ago. I don't know that email. I don't think I can even access my original Live for Speed. But if you still have it, there was an update. And that is fascinating. Can you imagine anybody who's a fan of Live for Speed? Uh, what? Scowin Roberts. Uh, oh, there were three. It was only a three man team who made that great sim. Can you imagine if Live, Live for Speed 2 came out? I mean, that blows my mind. That would be the biggest news for me on the software side of things in ages. I, I, I'm going to have to try to get a hold of them and find out. Is there any, if this patch came from them and Live for Speed lives, could we see a Live for Speed 2? I'm dying here. I'm dying. The Scirocco. Oh, oh, dick. Hitting him below the belt. <laughs> Inside joke to anybody who's a Live for Speed fan. The Scirocco that never came out. Uh, i like to show you guys, and it seems to be the Sim Race Hardware News Test. I, I'm going to have to make them my favorite. You guys might want to as well. But if you want to see cool high-end hardware that is coming out, you've got this uh, cool wheel. Turn wheel, magnetic shifters, carbon on it, uh, Leo Bodner card built into it um anti-twist cable uh but the amount of these coming out really shows you victor van vardigan that's right that's right and there was one more guy victor was the audio guy if i rem scowen was the main guy and i think he was physics victor was the audio guy and then they had another guy who was i think more on the marketing side who funny enough i can't remember his name there was a third member of the team scowan had a baby it all crumbled oh this is very nostalgic sorry all you young guys who don't know what the old birds are talking about you need to have gray hair to know what we're talking about seriously uh speed maniacs has a write-up here uh talking about the virtual career mode 
built into F1 2018, and they're saying surprises and tactics, almost like F1. So, all I'm going to say about this, you know, in advance of its release, I remember the original F1 2000. 11 2012 13 anyway the original f1 game by uh by code masters and it was living the life and there was all this like behind the scenes more gamey even though it's eric bailey thank you guys you guys are awesome um behind the scenes uh 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 stuff beyond just the sim racing itself and then they kind of went away from that the game kind of went on a roller coaster ride of its realism 2010 thank you george um, that's what, like I said, you guys have my back. You guys are the stars of the show and it's your contributions in so many ways that, that really make it happen. So I appreciate being able to talk about it. I wish that we could get the delay closer so it could be a little more instantaneous. But anyway, I have to admit F1 2017 was my favorite version of the game ever. And it looks like they're kind of expanding on that and getting back to some of that living the life, which is going to make it a lot more single player fun. Maybe my brother would even play it. My brother doesn't multiplayer. He only single player games. And there's a shortage of that in this new world, if you notice. Most games have gone multiplayer and have kind of gotten rid of or minimized the amount of single player. So anyway, that is going to do it. I Look at that. No news. And we still West Brothers, yes. Oh, you guys, we could we could go on and on on vaporware too. Vaporware is a whole other topic. Um, maybe I'll leave you guys with one final thought since we are uh, since we're uh, talking nostalgic. I want to know if you guys have ever had an embarrassment of gaming where you like were like, oh, this was the greatest game ever because it's in your memory. You are so fond of it, a game you used to play, but we moved on anyway. I remember for years I used to rant and rave about how good Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed was. And arguably it was one of the best Need for Speed in the whole franchise series for its time. But I used to tell people, it's so good, it's so good. And then like eight years later I pulled out the disc and I installed it. And it was like the blockiest thing I'd ever seen. And I was like, no way. I used to tell everyone this game was so badass and now I'm looking at it and it's almost laughable. That's the beauty of, uh, of gaming. Uh, compared to most other things in life. Gaming advances by leaps and bounds that no other industry. I mean, look at movies. Movies have looked like they've looked since, you know, CGI was invented or since black and white switched to color. But video games, man, they get better and better every year, every decade. And uh, Dave Blair, uh, shout out to John Hill. John Hill, I talked to him uh, yesterday. He's doing very well, actually. He's doing better than he expected. He does have some pain. It'll be a while till he's getting into the sim again. But he is uh, uh, feeling better and recovering. So uh, I'll, I'll tell him you asked. And uh, thanks for the shout-out to John Hill. So that is going to do it for today. Today's Tuesday, and I needed the day to catch up. Tuesday day is the day that I don't stream anything else. I am getting back to edited content. I am working and behind on the next level. I'm trying to get this out this week as promised. And then moving right into the AccuForce review because we need that SimPit channel creating content. It can't just be relying on the live streams because we're over here with the crew. Anyway, thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the team. This is the SimPit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.